So, jetzt geht's live weiter hier. Das dritte Viertelfinale bei den Herren Stefan Edberg gegen Andrew Agassi. Die beiden sind seit geraumer Zeit auf dem Platz. Die letzten Aufschläge und dann geht es los, dieses mit großer Spannung hier erwartete Spiel. Beide haben im Verlauf dieses Turniers gezeigt, dass sie zu glänzenden Leistungen aufgelegt sein können. Andrew Agassi vor allem in seinem Spiel gegen Aha. Boris Becker, in dem er ja vor allem im ersten Satz nahezu fehlerfreies Tennis gezeigt hat. Aber auch Stefan Edberg, der 28-Jährige, der so sagen nicht wenige möglicherweise in der Form seines Lebens sich befindet, zumindest ganz nah dran ist. Da gibt es überhaupt keinen Zweifel an seiner absoluten Bestform. Und er war ja über lange Zeit die Nummer 1 in der Weltrangliste, Stefan Edberg. Natürlich möchte er wieder ganz zurück nach oben, aber das ist nicht mehr das ganz, ganz große Ziel in seinem Leben. Auch er, wie Boris Becker, vor nicht allzu langer Zeit Vater geworden. Da gibt es jetzt Wichtigeres. Aber allein mit dieser Einstellung oder diese Einstellung ist doch immer wieder einiges wert und sie lässt ihn befreit aufspielen. Er ist im Moment in der Weltrangliste die Nummer 3, Stefan Edberg. Und wenn er dieses Spiel gegen diesen Mann, gegen Andrew Agassi, gewinnt, dann hat er Michael Stich von der Position 2 zumindest mal verdrängt. An die Position 1 im Herrentennis ist im Moment ebenso wenig zu denken wie bei den Damen. Denn die sind besetzt, Sempres und Graf. Das erste Aufschlagspiel jetzt in diesem Viertelfinale beginnt bei Andrew Agassi. Ungewohnt vorsichtig, Stefan Edberg. Normalerweise, wenn er einmal vorne ist am Netz, geht er nicht mehr zurück. Er weiß natürlich so halbherzig vorbereitet, das Ganze gegen einen Andrew Agassi, das ist mehr als gefährlich. Er wird sich schon die richtige Taktik zurechtgelegt haben. Aber auch Andrew Agassi 40-15 im ersten Spiel. Yeah, nice. 1-0 die Führung für Andrew Agassi. Applaus von den Zuschauern hier. Also nicht wie im Achtelfinale gegen Cedric Piolin, als er sich ja gleich den Aufschlag abnehmen ließ, Andrew Agassi. Jetzt der Gegner Stefan Edberg, wieder ein bekannterer Name, einer der ganz, ganz Großen. Und das weiß man von Andrew Agassi, wenn er gegen die ganz Großen spielt, dann ist er oft 120 Prozent da. Von Beginn an, vor allem wenn der Gegner Boris Becker heißt, aber auch gegen Stefan Edberg. Hat er einige gute Ergebnisse erzielen können. Die Bilanz der beiden gegeneinander, da führt er Andrew Agassi mit 3 zu 2. Also eine relativ enge Angelegenheit. Ganz anders als in der Bilanz Agassi gegen Boris Becker. Die beiden standen sich auch hier bei diesem Turnier in Kiwis Kane schon einmal gegenüber. 1990 im Finale. Damals gab es einen Viersatzsieg von Andrew Agassi. 6-1, 6-4, 0-6. 6-2, das erste Spiel der beiden gegeneinander. 
im Jahr 1990. Das entschied ja. Stefan Edberg gegen sich. Auch das war ein Finale, das von Indian Wells. Auch das ging über vier Sätze, 6, 4, 5, 7, 7, 6, 7, 6. Das letzte Aufeinandertreffen 1992 im Davis Cup. Sieg wieder an Andrew Agassi, einer der besten Davis Cup Spieler. Auch da der Sieg in vier Sätzen. Also man kann sicher von einer engen Entscheidung hier ausgehen. Es gab noch nie ein zu Null gewonnenes Spiel, weder von Edberg noch von Agassi. Also zwei oder drei zu Null Gewinnsätze, wenn diese beiden aufeinandertreffen. Redberg mit einem problemlos gewonnenen ersten Aufschlagspiel, 1 zu 1. Redberg, der einzige verbliebene Spieler in diesem Turnier ohne Satzverlust, so das heute ändern wird. I think he is a very heavy player, Brad Gilbert. I think that makes all kinds of sense. Andre Agassi, uh, not without Nick Terry, who helped guide his career for so long. And in, and in fact, Tony Picard is not here with Stefan Edberg. He's here with his wife and, and little baby daughter instead. Oh. women's singles I enjoyed that women's singles match I thought we might see uh, history there at one stage uh, Lindsay Davenport had a shot at winning that second set Jeffy Graf coming through in the tiebreaker but uh, this place is packed now for this men's match it, uh, I haven't come back from the drinks yet but it was it was relatively full for the women's semi-final and uh, that's a big crowd for a Thursday here for oh. this from Edberg. No better volume in the business than Edberg. Make no mistake. The thing about him is that you know exactly what he's going to do every time. And you know he's going to do this a lot more if Agassi misses first serve. The chip and charge. He's not going to hurry it. He's going to regulate it so that he gets there. Look at the footwork and the eye on right on that ball. He cups the little drop shot. You have to soften your wrist to play that one. And he played it to perfection. Game point Agassi.
steers that forehand wide and Agassiz holds on. So Agassiz's got the lead. Two games to one. No break to serve yet. Hope you're enjoying our coverage of the Lipton men's quarterfinals. Pretty impressive from the serve percentages there. Uh, but he hasn't really played his best tennis because he's hit more unforced errors than winners. Normally, uh, if you're playing well, you hit more, strike more winners than unforced errors. Great points, one. That's not a bad percentage. He'd like to see it up a little more. I don't know about that. It's a very good percentage. Really good. Against the big servers. I didn't say it was a bad one. No, no, no. That he broke 13 times is absolutely key in this match because, as we've been mentioning, you know, Stefan Edberg has only dropped serve a couple of times. He's been into the net so much more than Andre Agassi, as you can see. And he's serving at 62%. That could, that could be good enough. You can see there the winners are more than the unforced errors, whereas Agassi is the other way around. 15 all. Let me remind you that in the Agassi played an abbreviated year, but he is still on the top of a couple of return of serve statistics. Points one returning second serve. He's the best in the business in 93, or was. Return games one also. He's right up there at the top. I just like watching Stefan Edberg's production on that backhand. I think it's one of the prettiest shots in tennis. It's uh, just textbook stuff. Good shoulder turn, gets the arm all the way back. Nice smooth follow through. There's nothing jerky about it. Actually, there's nothing jerky about any part of Stefan Edberg. Game no. or otherwise. <laughs> just about his serve. Well, I think his serve is a bit jerky. Yeah, it's, it's serve and forehand a bit jerky. Everything out about him is uh, very clean, very pure. You're talking from a woman's point of view. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I just don't think he's there. Yeah. <laughs> to, to use the word jerk, describing this guy is... Uh, just have a little problem with that word, I guess. I think he's as good as it gets in men's tennis. Very decent man. He's very kind, very thoughtful, modest, unassuming for someone this famous, this talented. Well, he likes the fact it's that rich. he can walk down the uh, streets in London, and uh, you know, there's a few people recognise him, as opposed to Agassiz, where even a lot more folks would recognise Agassiz in London than recognise Edward. That's right. Agassiz out of reach, yeah. trying to get to that one, and we are even at two games all. This is the way Stefan Edberg will play this match. There it is, and he gets up, the kick that serve, gets in, makes that first volley, goes back to the backhand, then anticipates that one, gets enough pace on that forehand volley, keeps the head of the racket up, gets enough speed on it that Agassi cannot control it when he gets over there. if you're going to aim to the weaker side of Edward's ground game, the forehand to take the air out of the ball as Agassi did there and force Stefan Edberg to create pace. With that hanging elbow of his, he makes errors. watch Stefan Edberg not in good position at the net. Agassi smacked the ball so hard and so early that Edberg took that one off his shoes and couldn't control it. 30 love. just checking the position of the sun there for the ball toss.
that is wide. It uh, says a lot for the way that Agassi played from the baseline and how deep he kept that ball that Edberg took so long to make his approach to the net. Dana Laconto is in the chair. Uh, Edberg asking about that approach shot call. It was a very close one. It was pace and good depth on all the strokes here. And Edberg tries to sneak in off a three-quarter ball, gets it out, slices it away. It's very close to the line of confident call from the Lions judge, however, and no overrule from the chair. Game point. And Mary alluded to a very important fact on the forehand. Edberg hit that forehand a lot better than the one where he has to create pace. That was a 94 mile an hour serve that he anticipated well and hit it for an outright winner. Agassi holds on, no break. Three games to two. Live coverage of the Lipton. We'll be back. Break points, no aces, no double faults. But as you can see, a lot of folks in the stands anticipating a big match. This is an important match, surely, for Andre Agassi. Agassi he wants to continue after the good win over Boris Becker a few days ago, but a very big match for Edberg as well. He wins this match, he'll become the number two player in the world again. He hasn't been there a while. Think about Edberg, he was in the final here in 1990. The man that beat him is playing against him today, Andre Agassi. He doesn't back up Andre Agassi. He stayed with Edberg there and won the point. At the Royal Rankings as of now, Pete Sampras has a big lead, but as you just said, Mary Edberg just behind Michael Thieke, and that will change if he wins today. Sergio Bruguera. He's number four. He won the French Championships last year, but he will drop if he doesn't have a good clay court season. Courier is at number five. Hey, Edberg won plenty of Grand Slam tournaments, but he didn't win anything other than on grass until 1991. He won a couple of Australians, both on grass. Then he won two Wimbledon, and the question was, was he ever going to win anything other than on grass? Then he had back-to-back -back U.S. Opens on hard. That's a good serve from Edberg. That one uh, right into the body of Agassi. Agassi likes to have plenty of room so that he can tee off on that double-hander. Thirty-fifteen. Agassi puts his hand up and says, look at this. This is nice to see. <laughs> As you were saying earlier, Mary, uh, Edberg is one of the nicest guys on the tour. He is not only nice in tour for the media, he is very popular among his fellow players. Watch what happens here. He slips. He is so quick, though. He was able to get back. However, this was lucky. He hits the tape and goes over. Yeah, out of reach. Watch. Edberg had every other shot covered except this one. It could have come over the net clean. He had all the court to make the next one. But the dead drop shot, the dead net cord, is a tough one to get back. And we've talked about the last couple of days, this net is very, very tight. Normally when the ball's been hitting the net, it's been bouncing well up in the air. Remember that shot because, I mean, it was a lucky shot. Make no mistake about it. Now he's got a break point.
I guess he won the last match that they played in four sets. That was the Davis Cup on clay indoors. Again, for my money, the most important part of our statistics is break points converted. And if you can jump all over that first one, it gives you a lot of confidence. Agassi has done that in his first break point chance. Familiar face for football fan, Jim Kelly. Don't often see too much of his face though until he gets to the sidelines and the big helmet's on. Gets knocked around a little bit too. unhappy with himself on two points in a row one he under hit one he over hit the shot to play Mary just miss hit that last one I mean he it was all over the net and the shot 30 all best time to break back when you've lost your serve you've got to try and get your concentration together that's when your opponent is most vulnerable when they're trying to consolidate that break Edberg got the angle on the volley there because he was sitting right on top of the net as Cliff mentioned break point <laughs> Edberg has not been playing with great form, uh, as we've already said this week, but he has been battling so well against Paul Harhouse. He was down 1-4 and was able to come through in straight. So, you know, so he's looking to do it right here, too. That was very bad with his hit. Talk about his two U.S. Open. Remember the second one when he came back three times before the final. Came back three times down a break in the fifth set in that championship to win it. That's when things really turned around for him, in my opinion, mentally. It was the most unbelievable effort. I wonder if it's ever been done before. I remember calling it at the time, and I think we were saying that it hadn't been done. His 91 form at the US Open Edbergs was his most incandescent form ever. He was much worse than 92. He defended anyway. Meanwhile, He's not playing well right now. Holds on in his five games to two in the first set. Edbergs is there. Agassi Lee. Edberg has already been broken. He's had five unforced forehand, six unforced backhand errors. He's missed twice at the net. I mean, there's no part of his game that is really cooking for him right now. Double fault. That's the only double fault for the day. I'm sorry. First, uh, excuse me. A little ahead of myself. There it is. I knew it was coming. <laughs> there you go. You're just so <laughs> precious. I love that about you. <laughs> We mentioned Stefan Edberg had those two U.S. Open wins in a row. Then last year, he lost real early to Karol Novacek, and he was just, he was spent. Seems as though he was still recovering from the year before when he, <laughs> when he had to defend his U.S. Open title. Just missed it. And you see, looking around to say, are you sure? Daniel Acanto has uh, no interest in changing this call, and nor should he, because it was long. Watch this. Edberg had to crowd the net because it was such a great return from Agassi, the first one. <laughs> Didn't look too long in the replay, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Philip Agassi and then Nike Cap. On a little sunscreen. 
Uh, very warm down here. Even the best weather they've had for this Lipton Championship for many years. And they've broken records because of it, as far as the spectators are concerned. Well, so far it's been all Agassi. We mentioned the unforced errors from both sides from Stefan Edberg. This one he's wrong-footed because of the short backhand. It was around the middle of the court. Agassi directed it down the forehand side. Game point Edberg. Agassi's comeback, he won Scottsdale, didn't have to go through any real superstars of the sport here. He beat Becker, but Becker is kind of struggling a little bit himself. And then Cedric Piolin, who's also struggling this year. Edberg's a different story, folks. Edberg holds on. He has had a very good year. He won Doha. And then at the Australian, lost the semi-final to Todd Martin in three tie breaks. After he had won the first set. In Stuttgart, Goran Ivanizovic was his victim in the final. So he's won two tournaments. And then at Indian Wells, Pete Sampras took him out in the semi-finals but that was the best match of the tournament so point is Agassi is up against a man who is playing very well this year line 15 with Agassi serving for the first set Sampras and Courier are in the semi-finals. They will play against each other. Rother and Grab, Rother from Australia, Jim Grab, USA. He's from Tucson. They'll play tonight. Winner of this match will take on the Rother Grab winner in the semi. Sampras Courier was the Wimbledon final last year. You might remember that. But now Jim's ranking has slipped to five, so they have to meet in the quarters. Well, I must say, I like the way Courier's played his last couple of rounds. In the semi. In the semi, sorry. That goes wide. He just looks. He just looks a little bit. You know, he's going for it a little bit more. He's looking. To, he's playing for the protectionist tennis there. I think it, the last couple of months, and and now he was swinging away. He played pretty well to beat Ivan Isinovich last night. Yeah, that's the best match he's put together for a while. A little. He bit. went for it. Yeah, right? a little more confidence. You know, it's tough when you're playing like Sampras. You don't think about anything. Corey is starting to think about a few things now. When you miss a few. Nice to see. Agassi doing what he does best with the passing shot. He loses the point. Edberg has got three break points. Both players doing what they do best. This is a great cross-court shot from Agassi, and Edberg has to blank at the net. Look at this net coverage. Then he closes in. Agassi gets up to it, throws up the lob. Look at the uh, footwork to get back, and he knows if he can reach it and get the angle, he gets it right back at his opponent. A host of break points now. Agassi saves one. He's the only man to have broken. Oh, boy, that's good stuff. He's competing better than he's playing, and now his game has come up as well. Now, Ed Berg joins him in the break column at five games to four. On serve, first set. Final match. Ed Berg and Agassi. Ed Berg serving, trailing 4-5. What I'm trying to make is that Edberg knows the strategy that he has to use to beat Agassi, and he sticks with it, even though he might get burnt a few times. Is it Brad Gilbert who's been helping Andre Agassi this week? <laughs> in his in his book, Winning Ugly, he writes about Stefan Edberg. You can burn him at that, you know, 30 times in a row, but the next point he's going to come right in again. <laughs> Oh. 
Now these are the points which Andre Agassi was mentioning uh, when I spoke to him the other day after the Becker match. He said, uh, you know, I need matches. I need to, to play big points. I still don't have that. 15 all. Goes to show Edberg, I believe, uh, that a little bit of work could have got to that and it went along. He is a very, very athletic man. And he's a very hard man to dissuade, but coming into the net closely. I mean, he's going to keep doing that too. He's going to dare you to hit great lobs. Something Brad Gilbert, in fact, does not have. <laughs> Gilbert yes. knows that Agassi has one, though. Brad didn't have the top spin that brought that one down. Agassi can do that off both sides. Only eight years old, Stefan Edberg, and he's six two. That's some solid reach and a game point. Edberg holds on. That is his first hit at three five, and Edberg broke him. Now it's five apiece. Tennis center at Crandon Park, what it's called officially. This houses the USTA National Training Center, and I was speaking with Ron Woods of the Junior Development Program the other day. We were, I was saying him what a great place this would be to host the Davis Cup tie. And it can't happen this year, the Davis Cup final, because this tournament is being used for something else, a seniors event. But it's, it's just a great size for Davis Cup. Footwork from uh, Agassi is all over the court during that rally. It's a pretty good effort from Andre. He, he knew this was a pretty desperate shot of his. He didn't have a, a whole lot to work with here, and he covered just, he hit it in just about the only spot that Edberg couldn't reach. A senior event you're talking about now, the Advanta Challenge. I think that's the, the end of a five city tour for Connors and McEnroe and Lendl. Oh, he's missed it. Gone for that angle again. He's done that on a couple of occasions. Right in on top of the net, that one. An easy shot for Edberg. Can't be too happy with that. Game point, Agassi. Players are going to change in. 6-5, Agassi leads Edberg to serve. After this. In the first set, six games to five, Agassi leads. This is Edberg serving. So we're on serve. They have traded breaks of serve. I'm surprised they're alongside Fred Scully and Mary Carrillo. A beautiful day on Kibis game. You tuned in to watch Black College Sports today. You'll see it after tennis today. This is live coverage of the Lipton. This is where Edberg has to be a little careful because Agassi is that one game in front. He can tee off as he tried to do there. And it's the first couple of points when the players will give it a ride. See if they can get that love 15. The first point's a big one or love 30. That may be decided with a tiebreaker. Uh, 
Oh, man. 100 mile an hour serve handled easily by the Agassi forehand. Oh, look at that. He's got all the time in the world to, to smack it even harder. Cuts down the angle, too. He never backpedaled. He cut down the angle and drilled it down the line. Another great return. At Edward's feet, he scoops it up long and it's 30 all. Look out. Ooh, took the tape and Edberg has got a game point. Ooh, I like that you get into that play. Agassiz had a crack at three here from 30 love down. And the percentages tell you that. If you're down 30 love and you're playing someone like that, the only way you get back into the game is having a good whack at a return and making a couple. And Agassiz did that to get to 30 all. Another taper on the return. And Edberg has held on at tiebreak time. First to seven, two-point lead wins the first set. point you would have to give a little bit of an edge to Edberg only because he's mentally fitter to play big points than Agassi. Of course Agassi has shown that he can come up with winners. <laughs> he can just yeah, this is he's a, so talented. This is a toss up. Ooh. That's the one that he was successful on the great serve. Runs round that second serve to hit the forehand. And his backhand's his best shot. But these are the tactics that he's gone on the court with. And he will employ them until they work for him. Look at this. Good shoulder turn. Had plenty of time. Moves forward on it. One to Edberg. Missed it on the return. Two zero. Great serve as wide as this could possibly be on the line. Well, if this is an indication of what's going to happen, then uh, it's not good. It's not good for Agassi. Edberg has really struggled. He was down in that one of Stoltenberg. I watched that one, and also Mary said he's down four-one in the first set to Parhus. I guess he's on the board in the tie break, 3-2, Edberg leading. Players will change in with Edberg. Ahead with the mini break, 4-2. Agassi has not been able to clip a return in the tie break like he likes to yet. Mark Clay didn't like the ball toss, so we'll do it again. Could not have hit a better return right at Edberg's feet, but he picked it up, stayed in the point, anticipated the backhand down the line, hits the winner. Big point for him, 5-2, Edberg. Again, after a great return like this, you must close into the net. So Edberg does that, and he looks for the cross court, took one step over there, but then 
That reply, that hit from, that, from Agassi was just a little high. If it had been a lot lower, he would have had to stretch out for it. That was a pretty simple one for him. Double fork, set point for Agassi. That's for Agassi. Edberg, excuse me. Agassi's only double fault in the match so far and uh, not at a very good time. Agassi saves one now. Edberg will have two on his own serve. He's now showing Edberg, hey, if you're going to run around your backhand and clock a forehand, I guess I can try that too. Little set point. For the second serve, let's see if Dana asks for quiet. He does. Still set point. find that 6-2 in the tiebreaker and they come back a good comeback there aided by that double fault from Ed Berg twice in the last two rounds Ed Berg has come back from a breakdown to secure the tiebreak and then he's run away with the last two matches in the second set Coach, he didn't say that. But well, Gilbert still going to play. Well, exactly. His other fish to find that question out there. But it would help because Brad Gilbert has never lost a, a match tactically. I mean, he's lost because he's been overplayed. And I think Andre Agassi has lost a lot of matches because he wasn't thinking about it right. Well, that was not up. Whatever happened to it, we couldn't see from our angle because we were right behind Edberg. It maybe clipped his toe, or take a look and see if we can find out here. Point Agassi, anyway. Now it's come up and hit him on the chin and went over. There he plays the half volley and then heads it over. There it is, and heads Off. it over the net, yep. Exactly what happened. Off his face somewhere. Set point. That'll 
do it for Agassi and he wins it for a set in a tie break. Nine points to seven off he was down six points to two. Players are going to sit down and take a break. We're going to take a breath as well. We'll be back. First point of the second set, Edberg to serve. First set took just 54 minutes, so just under an hour. can happen now this is a sitter for Agassi uh, for uh, Edberg this is just lap lack of concentration laps in concentration I'll get it in a minute goes back here Agassi makes the stroke look at that an easy put away and he dumps it into the net 15 all still going to be thinking about that 6-2 lead in the tie break that when he broke serve in the first set, Agassi, that he had a very fortunate call that let him get back into Edberg's serve, and there was only one break of serve apiece. Well, it was a, wasn't a call, it was a, a let cord that went over and hit the top of the yeah. tape at 30 love. And right. He had luck in the tie break, too. Yeah. <laughs> Edberg double faulted and you know, lost himself a couple of big points. Create your own luck, though, in a match like this, and that's, that's what happens enough. in tournaments. You go with two fellows that are playing as well as these guys have been, and Agassi wants it. Edberg's been playing well, and now he's lost concentration for a bit because of the loss of four set points in the tiebreak, and now he's in trouble. Sets up the passing shot, and Agassi now has a set and has broken in the first game of the second set. Now, there's a young lady by the name of Stephanie Flaherty that became famous here. Stephanie, who you might be asking? Well, what happened was here in this match against Boris Becker, here's a, a look at uh, Andre Agassi and Boris Becker. Becker feeling very poor about his game at this point. Agassi very much in control of the match. He had won the first set. And was in control of the second. Becker having a frustrating day of it. Watch what happened. Becker loses. Uh, picked up his racket. He lost his racket. Picked it up and gave it to Stephanie Faraday. Says, why don't you go ahead and have some fun with this thing? And she is not plus at this stage. She says, wait a second, what do you want me to do out, out there now? He says, go and play. He insists. So she goes out there. Andre Agassi, meanwhile, he is going along with this whole thing, and he serves to her. She, it was a, a fault, but she plays it anyway. Agassi backs up. She makes a great forehand top spin. That's out of reach of Andre Agassi, and she wins the point against Agassi. So Mary Gorilla tracks Stephanie Flaherty down, and here's what they she has unsung heroes at tennis tournaments but fate took a mighty hand today and changed the life of this young woman here 17 year old <laughs> a senior stop stop giggling at hialeah miami lakes high school stephanie flaherty your life has changed when boris becker handed you his racket what was that like i was really nervous and i didn't know what to do or what he wanted me to do and everyone was like, the whole stadium was looking at me, and I was pretty nervous, but I got over it. You won the point! Yeah, I, I, beat a, I won a point against Agassi. 
what was the biggest thrill? Becker handing you the racket or you winning the point against Andre? Um, I think I think everything because I like the point is like a big blur. I mean, I didn't even remember if I hit a backhand or a forehand. People told me afterwards I hit a backhand, and <laughs> it was pretty nerve-wracking. Now you play for your high school team. Yeah, I play number one on the team. You do, and you're supposed to. You're playing hooky this this week. Yeah. You told them your school you were sick. I'm sick. And, <laughs> and now in the biggest, the most high-profile match of the entire tennis season, you show up on national television. Yeah. How do you think that's going to go over at school? Oh well, my teacher will get over it. <laughs> Es wogt hin und her dieses Viertelfinale zwischen Andrew Agassi und Stefan Edberg. Zunächst Vorteile für den Amerikaner, ein frühes Break im ersten Satz. Dann kam Stefan Edberg zurück, sah dann eigentlich lange Zeit wie der mögliche Sieger des ersten Satzes aus. Vor allem im Tiebreak beherrschte er Andrew Agassi, führte 6 zu 2. Plötzlich war der Faden gerissen. Der erste Tiebreak und auch der erste Satzverlust von Stefan Edberg in diesem Turnier. Und jetzt gleich ein Break. Zu Beginn des zweiten Satzes zur 1 zu 0 Führung von Andrew Agassi, der auch aufschlägt. Dieser Gewinn des ersten Satzes hat Andrew Agassi deutlich erkennbar Auftrieb gegeben. Seine Bälle jetzt wieder so exakt gespielt, mit einer Sicherheit, wie etwa im Spiel gegen Boris Becker. That's what she, she said that in the newspapers. Well, they'll get over it. What an attitude. Agassi, 15 love, one game to love, one set to love. So apparently the, uh, the ball kids are instructed when they uh, try out for the Lipton to get a job here at the Lipton. They're not allowed to talk to the players. They're not to converse with them. And uh, hey, she didn't know what to do. Boris said play. Agassi said play. So what's a kid going to do? Play. 30 love. Good job to work his way in. I'm happy to see that coming from Agassi because right throughout that point he changed the strategies a couple of times, hitting out and then a couple of times rolling them back deep and deciding to come in. As Mary said, he didn't quite get to the volley, but uh, they're good signs. He has not played a lot of matches in the past five months. About 3.30 in the afternoon, some of those, uh, those lights you can see are casting some shadows on this court. And it is distracting. It, it, it really is. But as Stephanie Flaherty would say, they'll get over it. They'll get over <laughs> it, yeah. I don't think they even see those too often. Boy, he has this good. I played on that court yesterday in the, in the Legends matches between uh, sessions and that court's very slow for the final match here and Agassi and Edberg 7-6 this is between the lines unforced errors Agassi 11 Edberg 18 he just framed another backhand there and Agassi saved four set points in the tiebreaker but it was like Rosewall and Emerson were saying hey the ball gets up a lot higher down on that court than they thought watching the matches so the bounce is a lot higher and Edberg's had problems with that today. Maybe it's the Agassi topspin also adding to the problem. Uh, no, 
another frame from Agassi. Should help his serve, shouldn't it? Because that really gets up. He's got a serve and volley, and that's what he is trying to do, but the Agassi return has really been up to the task, and Edberg, in something that's a bit unusual for him, is even missing volleys today. Game point, Edberg. Another miss hit on the return, and the players will change hands. It's two games to one. Agassi's got the break. He won the it is a tremendous tennis stadium. I guess you might say that the uh, tennis center at... Uh, Flinders Park is as good, certainly more expensive to build, but this one yeah. is beautiful in every respect. Well, different type. This is an outdoor stadium. Flinders Park basically is uh, designed as an indoor stadium because they have to have uh, rock concerts and so forth, and you get into the sky boxes through the elevators, and it's all enclosed out here. What are they call it? A la fresca. Well, the sky boxes here, first time, all the sponsors involved are, are very pleased with what they've done here, the way they've been designed. Folks can be entertained from the various sponsors that are here at the Lipton. same people who designed this fabulous place are also designing the U.S. Open, the new U.S. Open tennis facility, and I, I just hope that uh, the USGA does justice to them and uh, that they don't try to cut too many corners because every tennis stadium that will be built from now on will be measured against this one. approach was uh, not quite deep enough and it just allows Agassi the extra time to set up and he plants that right foot and lets it go. Edberg is not being able to get to the net as quickly as he would like. And part of the reason for that is that Agassi is keeping him pinned to the baseline with some very powerful hitting. Game point. So Agassi holds on and it's three games to one, Agassi. For those of you that uh, have tuned in to watch LPGA magazine, you will see that show today here on ESPN, but a little later than you expected. Come back at 4.30 p.m. This is live coverage of the Lipton Agassi in Edberg. 3-1. Agassi leads on one set of He, he is making the speediest man in tennis look slow. Boris Becker does not move nearly as well as Edberg. 
Agassi is moving so well, he's giving himself so much time to really pound the ball that even a man like Stefan Edberg is reaching at the net. Oh. Look at that, or not being able to reach at all. Talking about players who hit the ball early, Agassi is about as good as there is in that department. When we were talking about early hitters, we were talking about Michael Chang, and Jim Courier hits the ball very early as well. Confidence is a marvelous thing, and uh, this could have been a totally different stage of the match had Edberg been able to win one of those four points and win the first set tiebreaker, but once Agassi won that first set tiebreaker, he has that set in his pocket, and then he can hit out. He can afford to go for that extra stuff, and he's confident, and he's starting to make them. 15-30. in the third direction there of Stefan Edberg. That's his first ace to the uh, ad court. He went down the line. He's been going there 36% of the time. Most of them, though, have been kickers out to Agassi's backhand to try and open the court up. He's tried to jam him on 16% of the times that he served, but most of them kickers out to the backhand to try and set up the volley. Look at that. He's just so confident at the moment, Agassi. This is the Agassi of old. Likes a target. Great point, Agassi. Remember, as you've just seen, Edberg is going about 50% of the time into the backhand. This could be disastrous here because uh, Agassi has broken every opportunity that he's had. Edberg has not quite been that successful. But if he is to go down two service breaks, this is history. He had to do it with two hands on one volley, and he just kept on coming forward. He didn't back off at all, this man from Sweden. Edberg just played the first one, knocked it off, and this is what happens on the deuce court. Much more even the way he serves on the deuce court. Most of them he served into the body, 35% into the body. That's trying to get a two-handed backhand jammed into the body so that Agassi can't take a swing at it. That one right there. <laughs> Agassi on this occasion didn't even try to hit the backhand. He was caught jamming and right in there. Look at that. He looked for the backhand and you just cannot make a shot when that one comes at you at 100 miles an hour straight at the body. Yeah, to do. Here is a break point for Agassi. He's already got a break in the second set. Just to recap for you, he's won nine of his first ten matches this year. He's only lost one match. He missed five months of action with a wrist injury. He played only 13 tournaments last year, was out for a lot of the year, had surgery in December, and returned just a couple of weeks ago in Scottsdale tournament that he won. Agassi's starting to press a little bit now. He's not coming in. He didn't come up that last point on second serves. Lobby. And it's good. good. What a shot. Second break, 4-1. Agassi with two breaks in the second set. He won the first in the tie break, having saved four set points. to one Agassi and one set in hand let's take a look again see how he won that last game his second break of the set with a toss and lob but yeah, it was set up by a great return and not not a lot on the volley flips it up in the air jumps because he figures it's in Edberg there knows it now look at the reaction from Andre Agassi two service breaks he's a man focused on winning this match serving at 4-1 
change anything for Edberg. He's still coming in. There's the rise, fall, rise, and fall of Agassi. It's been an up and down thing for him, Fred. Certainly has since 1991. Look at that. Last year end at 24. But you know he's going to be back. And everything's going for him today. It all started off, if you remember, in the opening set. Three games to two. And it was 30-15 uh, on Edberg's serve. And a net cord that just dropped over the net. Stefan Edberg was standing right there. Couldn't make it. And then Agassi achieved that first break to 4-2. And from then on, everything's gone his way. Edberg on his heels right now, Agassi. Edberg's last service game, he started to press a little bit in my mind. He didn't go in behind second serve because he'd been burnt with the return. Just the pace of the return, he hasn't been able to manufacture much off the volley. And Agassi has just gone from strength to strength right now. I have the feeling that Edberg is not actually, at this point, even looking to get into the net as often. There he comes. He's hurrying now, he's pressing, he's trying, he knows what he wants to do. Game point for Agassi. Consider that Agassi had four set points against him in the first set time break. The 6-2 matches just turn around on a few points, don't they? And uh, Stefan Edberg lost seven of the last eight points in the tiebreaker. Lost the tiebreaker nine points to seven and has not been in it since. That's another of the serves that we talked about where he jams it straight at his opponent. That time he made the volley. 15 love. take it. I think he thought it was out. Yeah, I think he was hesitating yep. too. 113 mile an hour. Ace. Uh, it's only his second ace today. Oh. Players are going to change ends and after the break it'll be Agassi serving at 5-2 for the match against Edberg of Sweden. championships that you're watching it is live and it's from key biscayne it is a very sunny and pleasant day and that's one way that you can protect yourself from the sun if uh, you're interested in keeping your eyes in pretty good shape presumably you'd have to be a pretty good tennis fan to wear those things andre agassi is the person that she is watching and he is serving for the match against stefan edberg we're in the second set tiebreaker first set agassi 5-2 in the second. Two breaks. Just to put this match into perspective, in the first set, it was very close in the tiebreaker. Edberg won 31 of 49 points played at the net, 63%. And look at this set, 7 of 19, 37%. Not good. But give Agassi some credit for that because the... Just like the first point of this game, he ripped the two-handed backhand that was on the shoelaces of Edberg, and that's the toughest spot to make a volley from. Forehand is errant. 
match points for Agassi. Agassi's won the last 11 points. If he wins this, it'll be 12 in a row to wrap up the match. Pretty happy Agassi camp up there. break in the first set like that yeah i definitely have to give stefan the assist on that one you know <laughs> I double fault that, and all yeah the double fault and he got up on me early in the tiebreaker i missed a few crucial first serves and he was looking to take advantage out of my second and did it quite effectively in the breaker but you know i hung around long enough in the breaker to to get those three points and then to turn it around and and then got him early in the second and yeah, that's right i mean he really went away could you feel that you had, you had really drained him yeah well the way our games match up it, it turns out that way you know we have these close sets and then whoever wins it really seems to bring another one down and that's when you really got to jump on it had i let him hold serve a few times midway through the second he gets his second win and i'm in for a three-step battle so it was real crucial for me to jump on him after that tiebreaker you were able so effectively to pass him any way you wanted especially off the lob i know brett gilbert's been working with you a lob is something he didn't have but obviously uh <laughs> you're coming up with them all over the place yeah well a lob is an effective shot that I, i've gotten away from it a few different times in my career and you know playing Stefan out here today you know he's going to be all over the net and you gotta you gotta back him up you gotta use the lob and I did quite effectively the wind was moving around I missed a few that I thought for sure were going in but I stay positive with it and hit a crucial one at break point you've already won a title this year but now you've had two very big wins Becker and Edberg in one one week I mean you must be feeling very very strong oh my goodness you know I mean I never would have dreamed that I could come back this quick and this strong but uh but I'm on a, I'm a man on a mission you know and uh I feel like uh, this is just another step that I've made today, and my goal is to really, to really take my career in a, to a place where it's never been, and this is certainly the way to do it. You've taken a lot of big swings off of, uh, off of that wrist. Is it holding up the way you like? Do you feel you need a rest? Well, after Scottsdale, I went to Palm Springs, and it got a little fatigued on me. I needed some rest after there, and I rested and planned well for this, and it stayed strong, and it's still feeling good. Hopefully, I have a couple more matches in me. I can give it another week's rest, and and hopefully I'll be done with it once I get back uh, a few weeks from now. You're still in the lift, and actually Stephanie Flaherty is also still in the lift, and the ball kid. Where is Stephanie? She's around, she's around. Stephanie, where is she? There she is, there's Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie. She's very, she's... <laughs> what are you, you're supposed to be out here? <laughs> okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Well, you worked, and you did a great job. Thanks for stopping, Andre. Thank you, man. Back upstairs, guys. Thanks and a big congratulations to Andre Agassi, an outstanding match by him today. Stefan Edberg, who has had a very good year. He's won a couple of tournaments already. Things are opened up a little bit for Agassi as he takes his leave of the court. To the delight of his many fans. And let's face it, he is one of the most charismatic players, if not the most charismatic player in tennis today. The stadium is emptying out after the agassi Edberg match won by Agassi in straight sets. Semi-final again, he'll take on either roster or grab. We'll be back after this.